the order of sort of bookkeeping causing the eyes and nodding T's. Uh, one, we noticed that the current proceeding is styled 11 Roger Road. The order from 1999 deals with 1 Roger Road. I think I know what happened in between, but for the purpose of the record, it would be good to nail down what did happen and when. I believe the property was subdivided so that that place could be built on, on the corner. Right now, the, pro the application refers to a different property by label than the one subject to the order that you see as well. Second, uh, sort of a dotting I's, crossing T's question, and this is to the building inspector. Uh, I see that the, build the order was issued on November 22nd, which was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, how is it delivered or served? It was hand delivered in my office on December 1st. On December 1st? Yes. Okay, thank you. And I actually have a. You want, want them to answer about the address? He has the answer right now. The, 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 the town changed the address of the property from 1 Lodge Road to 11 Lodge Road. Yeah. The, the town um, designated a different street address. For the property at issue here? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You know when that happened? It, for, for the board's information, it was about 2004. Um, the property on the triangle of Blue Hill and Roger was, was originally, I think, designated as Blue Hill Road. There was a house there since the turn of the 1900s. And this board actually saw a, a variance application in 07, 08 for that house. So when you saw it in 07 or 08, that house was one. The renumbering had already occurred, and, and the subject property here was 11. So it was somewhere in 03, 04 that it changed. And I have a conceptual question, which I'd like to address to this clerk first and get the parties' attention to respond to it. Uh, this case has been styled for our purposes today, and let's take for that purpose. Uh, as all about compliance with the 1996 order and with the nature of, a, of what, what uh, the business that was allowed to continue in the 1996 order. Accepting that construction of the situation, and I'll get to that after we talk, discuss, uh, I, th I thought about why was there an order in 1996? It was because there was a controversy in 1996. Thinking about the reason for the controversy and looking at the, at the affidavits we got before led me to understand how the different people could be seeing things that make this evidence more or less consistent. And what they describe is a controversy about expansion of the operation immediately before the order in 1996. Well, the question arises, uh, is the business that is allowed to continue the one that was in operation the date of the consent order? Was it not the one in operation the date that the town filed in court to enforce the building inspector's order, which the then owner was ignoring? Is it the date of the building inspector's order? Is it the date of the change in operation that led to the complaint that led to the order that led to the consent order? I can imagine a legal argument for any of those dates. Uh, is there any governing authority about that that will help us, or should we apply judgment? You need to apply judgment to it. You need to look at the facts and the history of the matter. One of the reasons why I recommended that you bring, consider bringing the 2011 file completely into into this matter, so that you all look at it before thoroughly before you make any determination. You know, certainly we could unearth the um, materials from the 1996 litigation. We could make an effort to do that. And obviously, it's 20 you know, years ago. So we could make an effort to dig into the archives to try to find you know, what, what other evidence there may be there. But in the end, what you're left with is the agreement for judgment and what it says. And that is the operative um, yeah. you know, uh, document. And so it may be, though, that when you look at the pleadings and so forth, it may give you a, a better flavor. And certainly, I can look into that you know, and work with the town manager to try to I'm sure those documents came back and are in your archives at this point. We can look for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you have something?
as I said, I would appreciate if the if the counsel for the appellant or the or the building inspector had a view different from that, and I'd be glad to hear it while the hearing is still open. Uh, I'll respond. Uh, typically, there's a complaint filed and an answer. Um, one party files a complaint, the town landowner files an answer. Those are allegations. They may or may not throw light. I've looked at the complaint. They may or may not throw light on the 96 agreement. I think what you're left with is its terms. And it says the business of Roger Trucking uh, may continue. So I, I think that's what you're left with. I, I, don't, I, I know that doesn't make your job easier, uh, perhaps more specificity uh, in the order or in the ad agreement itself would have been helpful t this many years later, but it's not available on the face of the order. And, and to follow up further, Madam Chair, through you, of course, also there was the 2011 determination which upheld the, uh, the June 2011 <clears throat> cease and desist order. So that's of Quite, importance as well. My question is only about the construction of the order and the events around it from 96 because the appellant says that's the only thing we're supposed to look at. Well, in my view, you need to look at 2011. You think that's more? I think you need to look at both. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I uh, speak to the yes. question? It's not a mystery what the 1996 case was about. It was about the owner at that time taking his uh, waste hauling trucking business and turning it into a recycling transfer station. That's what was going on. <laughs> we know that uh, it was very much in vogue in the 1990s. They started taking appliances, picking up appliances, having people drop off appliances. They built a concrete structure uh, where they were starting to store these materials, starting to sort them, putting them into different uh, operations. And from the building inspector's point of view at that time, they were running a transfer station. And that was perceived by the building inspector to be an expansion of a non-conforming use. And the building inspector challenged the operation of a transfer station. The agreement for judgment, which is a binding judgment against the town of Great Barrington, says, in no uncertain terms, Roger may continue to maintain its business and office at the site and may continue to park at and operate from the site all its trucks and equipment, including trucks which have full or partially full boxes or dumpsters on them. <clears throat> Provided, however, that said full or partially full boxes or dumpsters shall not be removed from the trucks at the site nor further emptied or filled at the site. That's what this was about. There is, there is, there is, there is, there, there is no, I think, dispute. <clears throat> I think the language is quite clear. I, I, I understand that, that the building inspector and perhaps his counsel would like to say, gee, we really don't understand what this language is saying about what can be done and what not can be done. Rogers Trucking had a trucking business. They hauled garbage. We know they had six garbage trucks. That's documented all over the place. We know they had roll-off trucks. That's documented. And we also know that you don't have an expansion or a change in a non-conforming use simply because the volume of business goes up. And you certainly don't have a change in a non-conforming use because instead of hauling garbage, you're now hauling dirt. If that's where we're really headed, well, then that's, that's where we'll find ourselves. But what, what, we, what we find here is that there is a trucking business, an equipment storage that was specifically allowed for this site. It, it, it specifically provides an, a judgment enforceable against the town. And that is what Mr. O'Brien is doing today. He's doing a trucking business, and, um, and he stores some equipment at the site. That's what he does. And the, and the, and the trucking business is as, as, as it's been described. He has eight trucks that he uses for dump trucks. And yes, I acknowledge he has four trucks that he uses in the in the uh, winter time for snow plowing from this location. The, the comment about 2011, I, I will have to take issue with the council, uh, the town council. I think that's going to be more of a source of confusion than clarity. And here's why. 
the complaint about activity was a landscaper's yard. <coughs> Gary O'Brien has a landscaping business. It had about, you know, 15 vehicles. It had what you and I and everybody in this room understands the landscaping business. Pickup trucks, with the trailers, with the lawn mowers, with all the operations that you have with a, with a landscaping business that was being operated at the, at, at the property. Those, what we heard about in 2011 from the neighbors was, gee, those trailers would go down and rattle down Roger Road and all the equipment would jingle on it. It was very, very disruptive. And, and, and what was going on there was a landscaper's business. And that was, the building inspector said, you can't have a landscaper's business there. He didn't say you can't have your trucking business there. You can't have that landscaping business, just like you can't have a transfer station. He wasn't challenging the, the, the trucking business use. And when we came to this board, it's true. Three members felt that even that landscaping business was, didn't rise to a change in a non-conforming use. Two members felt otherwise. We know by law, it takes four members, building inspector's uh, um, um, uh, uh, decision that a landscaping business was, was an expansion, was going on there, and that's how that case was resolved. Today, we are not talking about anything other than his trucking business. That's what it is. And this notion that there's more than one business here, I thought I cleared that up in the last meeting. There are a couple of vehicles that say Gary O'Brien landscaping that are leased to, to, to his trucking business. The fact that there is a, uh, a, a, um, uh, a decal <coughs> on a truck doesn't suggest that there are two businesses. We've been told you exactly what, what those trucks are. There is one business operating on that property, and it's the trucking business. And, and it has uh, trucks going in and out of there, just like it had trucks going in and out of there for the last eight or nine decades. And again, I'm not going to get into a counting process in terms of, gee, is it six <coughs> trucks or eight trucks or ten trucks? Because you know something? None of that matters. Until you get a level of intensity of use that arises to, that we see in the case law, 30 times, you know, um, uh, and, and, and multiple times where you're really talking about a completely different operation, you don't have an expansion of a non-conforming use. You just don't. And, and, and that's what I urge the board to, to keep their eye on. So I don't think this judgment is confusing. I think the words say what they were, what they say. And obviously, if you want to advocate to try to, you know, shut this business down in this location, then you're going to say, gee, we can't figure out what these words mean. But I think if you read, if you read the words on the page, they say what's allowed, and what Mr. O'Brien is doing today at this site is exactly what is specifically allowed under this agreement for judgment, and we ask the board to so find. I have a question. Yes. Claudia Shapiro, 78 on Mount Plain Road. This uh, meeting seems to be based about a 1996 um, a judgment. Judgments have statues. They expire when they're not recorded. Uh, was this judgment ever recorded in the Registry of Deeds or in Land Court? Well, it was recorded at the Registry of Deeds. It was recorded with the court. The book and page is book 2015, page 87, recorded on, uh, uh, in 2000. Can you that, please? The sure. Book and page? The book is 2015, page 87. But that's 14 years past 1996. That's long past the statute. It's a six-year statute to record. It has nothing judgment. to do with the statute. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't... I want through. that stated for the record, please, what I just got up and said. Thank you very much. It was 14 years later. Madam Chair, through you, yeah. I, the 1996 judgment would still be in force and effect, but to speak to what Attorney Bellow was saying about the 2011 cease and desist order, which was upheld, in my opinion, that is before this board, because there was a cease and desist order that was an interpretation of that 1996 judgment that took effect, wasn't appealed. And so that is something that the board needs to look at, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes, John. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Feldman, a couple of questions. Um, <coughs> since I was one of the three in the 2011 case, it seems to me that um, there's a difference here whether you want to make a legal argument that it is still a non-conforming use, it seems to me that the impact on the neighborhood now 
for whatever reasons is greater than it was then. And uh, that's what really troubles me. And you said in your presentation today, and you said it once last week, the, the last meeting, that you just you, you said that uh, the O'Briens want to be good neighbors. What does that mean? Well, what I can tell you it means is this. When I hear that there's a, a couple of truck drivers that uh, don't seem to be respectful when they're driving down that driveway, like I heard tonight, there's some people that drive down at four or five miles an hour, or whatever I heard tonight, and there's some people that sort of disregard that. That's not something that I know Gary O'Brien uh, condones. That's not something that uh, he wants to see happen. And, you know, I certainly know, regardless of the outcome of this meeting, that, you know, his drivers will be told when you, when you navigate down Roger Road, you do it deliberately in a slow speed and things like that, because that kind of conduct shouldn't happen, number one. Number two, uh, to, 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 to address what you just said, no, I, I, I am not suggesting at all that, I, I know you're hearing that the impact is different on the neighborhood. I don't understand how it can be different. You have the same types of Mack trucks and international trucks and diesel trucks that were traversing Roger Road um, what you had as different in kind back in 2011 was in addition to that, you had all the landscaping activity, mm -hmm. which was really in, uh, uh, creating a, a much more intense use and the nature of the, the noises and the impact on the neighborhood were different as it was described back in 2011. But today what you're hearing from people that have moved into the neighborhood in the last few years, this gentleman moved in in 2017, is that, you know, he hears these diesel trucks go by. Well, <coughs> if he was here in 1996, he would have heard the same diesel trucks. trucks go by. Let me interrupt you. And landscaping trucks. A lot of landscaping trucks. You can talk with somebody who's in the in here and will say that they saw a landscaping truck last is, week. Is a pickup truck with a decal on it? We're talking about trucks that actually have trailers. I, I'd like you to, to just wait and let me speak, and then sure. you can come sure. and speak to the board. Listen, so I... I there is certainly a, a truck that goes by with a, a metal trailer on it. As, as you see from the excise tax records, there were two trailers taxed. As you see from the insurance records, there were two trailers that were insured. And yes, there may be a trailer or two, you know, a double axle trailer that is there today. There's no question. But the trailers are not used to have lawn mowers and glass clippings and all the materials that a landscaper uses. It's just not what it's used for. It's used in the same way it was used then sometimes it involves a piece of equipment that was stored at the property, just like the agreement for judgment provides. Let's assume for a moment that all of that is leave that all of that aside. Um, it's one thing to tell his drivers what to do. Is is are either the O'Briens up there on a permanent basis to oversee this? I am not, but I have somebody that's there every day. Um, that's at my shop before the drivers get there, and usually before the drivers leave. Then why? If that, assuming that's the case, why are they speeding out of there at the rate they are? I mean, I've had a conversation with all the drivers. At this time, I believe they are not at all. And the other thing I have now is I have GPS that runs on every one of my trucks. I can see the speed they're on Rod Road. I can see when the truck stops. I can see when the engine starts. I can see when the engine shut off. Well, you've got two sets of brakes then, right? The engine brake on the trucks and the, the regular brakes. The engine brakes are off until they hit route seven. But if you, if you, if you put a speed limit on them to route seven, let's okay. say five to ten miles an hour. I've told myself fifteen mile, no greater than fifteen miles an hour from the time you leave the shop to the time you hit route seven. But is that, that, is that the way it's working now or not? Because according to the neighbors, it's... It is. Well, again, I'm not going to dispute that... that it, I'm not... To, uh, we're not... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to dispute that someone could have violated that. I, I, I don't, I don't want to... Today... Well, I think it's... Yes. it's I, think it's uh, I think it's important because uh, that's one of the... One of the, um, the conditions that we may have to consider. And I think it would require, at least I'm speaking for me at this point only, I think it would require um, uh, a number of specific conditions for the O'Briens. And we'd 
also set up an enforcement procedure that requires him to pay fines for every violation um, because the enforcement issue is something that really bothers me. And as I understand uh, Chapter 40 of the law, we can, we can impose a fine equal to what the building inspector can, which would be, it's Pitsky, but it would be $300 per violation. And um, the, to the extent that uh, we can slow the trucks down, and if they're not slowed down, there's a $300 fine, fine per each time they don't per day. And um, um, that I have a, a lot. Of, I have about six other conditions too. But I mean, I'm just wondering what your re, your, your reaction would be to this because this is a really it's a difficult issue, as you say. You know, I, I, I will have to have to hear the conditions. We'll have to be able to evaluate them to determine whether or not they're conditions that we well, think are appropriate or not. The, a, a speed limit, limitation. Well, wait a minute. I no don't, one's, if no it, one's if it's seems okay, to be challenging. If, it, if it's okay with the chairperson, I can give them to you. But they're just, they're just mine. Okay. Um, okay. What I'd like to have see is somebody. I know that I know what Gary just said, but I'd like to see an O'Brien on the site full time. That's the first thing. Um, I want the building inspector to have unlimited access to the property whenever he wants to go up there. Um, I'd like speed limits of some amount, like. And not, not, not no, no use of the large trucks engine brakes until they hit Route 7. And uh, that they don't exceed 10 miles an hour or 5 miles an hour, whichever, until they hit uh, Route 7. And also that they take, get rid of the uh, uh, race car that's up there, which, which creates a tremendous amount of noise. And I don't think there's any reason for that to be there. I think at least once, once we start talking about numbers of trucks and everything, um, and even assuming <coughs> it's, it's, it continues a non-conforming use, the, 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 the issue is if, if the board wants to, and Gary and the O'Briens are willing to do it, and we want to work something out, that we've got to work something out that's amenable to both sides. Um, and then the last part of it would be that the O'Brien's um, put $5,000 into a fund with the town of Great Barrington so that when, if the building inspector imposes a fine, he doesn't have to run around collecting it. He can just go to the fund and, and take the money out. Um, but how's the power washing funded? Again, I could, I could try to respond to each condition. Uh, if that's if that's worthwhile, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Well, that's um, up to the that's up to the chairperson. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll listen to you. Okay. Okay. So uh, the first one about one of the O'Briens physically being there full time on the property every day, I think is a uh, a, a too onerous condition. I think we would agree that um, a designated manager. Um, that that manages that facility. We can identify who it is and, and as that person changes, provide that name to the building inspector, but I certainly think there's a way to accommodate what that's getting at, which is somebody that's managing the operations, making sure that um, um, it's being conducted in a way that's consistent with whatever decision comes out, we can put into place. The, the notion that it's physically these two people uh, all day. I'm not saying the two of them have to be there all day. Right. Somebody, Some, well, right. somebody has to be there that answers to the O'Briens. Right. Really that is a management. Form. Understand. Yes. And that yeah, I think that that person <coughs> has to also be knowledgeable and uh, be acquainted to with to the neighbors, so that the neighbors yes. know this person, so yes. that if they have something to say, 
they, if they need, if they want to make a complaint or something like that, they know exactly to vote. We understand that concept, and I think okay. that's a workable concept. Uh, building inspector access is a no issue. Of course, the building inspector has access whenever the building inspector wants access. That's 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 not an issue. Uh, I don't think a speed limit is an issue. I don't know if it's the, if the right number is 10 miles an hour. Maybe it is. The no engine brakes until Route Seven. That's 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 that's, that's yeah. that that should be operating procedure. That that should be the case. I I could add to it that, um, uh, you know. The, uh, the race car, I understand there's a, there's, a, there's a stock car that once a week during the summertime um, is, is there. It's mine, yeah. And that's your, that's yours. Yeah. So I can't I'll speak to that. I'll let you speak to that one. Um, the, the, I, there's not a problem with putting a, a, a fund away. The problem is that I can't set up a procedure where there's no due process. In other words, where someone says, gee, I saw a truck going down at 12 miles an hour, fine at $300, and we well, don't have an opportunity to address that. So that's the, the only problem, is, is creating a, a mechanism that, you know, is, is, is no, workable. I, I agree with that, but what, the, only, the, 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 the only way the, the, the town can enforce anything is Council for the building inspector has said is if they go to court, and they've already done that, and that's an expensive process. And what I'm trying to do is figure out a way that that, that creates a method of enforcement. It doesn't require the town to go to court each time. Now, I, 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 I don't think I don't think the O'Briens would want that. And I don't think the town would want it. It's expensive. No, I don't, there's no question that... I mean, I'm, I'm just giving you general outlines. I mean, it, you know, yeah. details would have to be worked out on how it would work. Well, I mean, the police we're, department we're, may have to be involved. We are, we are open to consider all, all, all... We are open to consider all these and, and get some details that work. And if, there's, and if there's another thought, you know, it's not precluded to this list. If there's another item on the list, we're, uh, we're open to talk about it as well. I mean, we're not blind by the fact that this is a challenging issue for the for the neighborhood. We get it, and we're trying to figure out is there is there a mechanism where uh, we can uh, cohabitate so that uh, it works better than it does now. It doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't serve the O'Briens. It doesn't serve the town. It doesn't serve the neighborhood. Every five or six years, we find ourselves in this situation. You you pointed out at the last hearing, I think. Quite appropriately, we'd love to come up with a solution that you know can define things so that we don't have to be back here again. And you know, we're committed to try to to try to find a process to do that, as long as it, it, it's one that allows the business to be able to operate uh, the way it needs to operate. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. You know, you've mentioned about the increase in nonconformity that you'd have to uh, reach a number about 30 times before it would be reached that critical point. We'd have For to have sure, that. 30 times would be an expansion. It, it, yeah. There may be but, a break point before but that. But if you go back to 1932 when it started, you probably reached that by now. You could consider how much the business has grown over the years. And uh, you have a very confined area now. I think you've reached the saturation point as far as the nonconformity. To go any further than this, and when I, the last time we met in 2011, and uh, to me, you know, I wasn't deciding with the, uh, the business that it should continue, but in, in that period of time, it has seemed to have increased. And I'm thinking about the, uh, the size of the trucks. They seem to be bigger. They seem like they have more of an impact on the neighborhood. And uh, I'm not sure if this was happening before or not, but it wasn't brought up with the... Uh, Don, I'm just going to... I'm just going to take John had to take a, take a break here. You need to just wait because she just doesn't want him to... <laughs> <laughs> he needs to hear it all. Okay. <laughs> so we'll take a pause. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can, can maintain your thought. <laughs> well, you know, getting all this way. I need to just thought.
party viola jokes among musicians? <laughs> Violas does not come on. Right. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> 